What's up guys, GrimXV here. In this video, we're gonna cover DevBlock24. I know I'm getting this out late, but I wanted to upload it anyway since I've seen so much misinformation around it. Today, we'll not only cover each topic, but also be taking a look at the community's reaction to one section in particular, and even some insights gained from an SLS staff member. So let's dive in. For DevBlock24, it looks like SLS's focus was to convey the changes coming that will allow for more player expression. They titled the DevBlock Slang and Style and featured this awesome armor and weapon as a header. By the way, who else is hoping we get these in game? Cause I know I'm not alone. Here's what they said in one of their opening paragraphs. It's time to discuss a topic that players have been frequently requesting ever since setting boot on the untamed soil of Vardaran. Players have long since been asking for more options in player expression from a need to show your unique slaying style to a desire to specialize your gear with more focused and themed stats to match your combat preferences. From the decadent countesses to the ghoulish necromancers, you've wanted to show what makes your vampire unique from your distinguished peers. And to Today's update, we'll delve into the particles, visuals, and aesthetics of everything equipable. The first topic covered was legendary weapons. We've known for a while now that we're getting more armor sets thanks to the data mine that revealed the death armor. With this post, they've confirmed we're also going to be seeing another tier of weapons called artifacts. Here's what they had to say about that. In addition to obtaining higher tiers of armor, legendary weapons will undergo comprehensive rebalancing across three tiers. This update also introduces a groundbreaking tier of artifacts featuring specific and distinctive weapons for each weapon type. These weapons won't just be unique in their names and statistics, but they'll entirely modify the way you play with advanced weapon skills. So first off, speaking on artifacts as a whole, I really like these, but I hope they're somehow gated. Ideally as a rare drop chance for either certain mobs or V-Bloods. This would be pretty much like adding the old GSR we had pre gloomrot back in, but I think that's something most of us would agree the game desperately needs right now. As for the revealed GIF itself, having the additional projectiles on the Axe E looks pretty sick, but could have some serious implications for PvP depending on how they work. My hope after seeing this is that this is only one of several possible ability changes for an axe artifact rather than the sole option. If there is only one ability option for each artifact, then I personally would rather have players have to choose which ones they want instead of having access to every artifact weapon possible. Next, they dropped a huge bomb on us with changes coming to the shards. In our last dev blog, we got to see hints of what they had in store for the 1.0 open world events that'll be in the new zone. Thanks to this blog, we now know that this pie line looking concept is tied to the shards in a big way. Here's what they said. So why are we talking about shards in this lovely update all about equipment if they're a bunch of fancy buildings. It's because they're not buildings anymore. Shards will now be a necklace item with powerful stats and buffs and will also provide a unique ultimate ability that overrides your currently equipped one. On a PvP server or server with appropriate settings, this necklace will be one of a kind. That means to use it, you'll have to risk it. There will also be a running timer on the shard and recharging it will require going into the world and replenishing its energy at events that spawn in the final zone. It's our hope that this encourages a more active and exciting experience for everyone while also providing interesting perks and innovative gameplay for vampires who like to play it a bit more friendly. You might not like PvP, but you probably do like a novel piece of gear with exciting abilities. So pretty insane news on that one. While I'll definitely mourn the loss of my shard room, this sounds like a great change. Not only will this promote more open world PvP, but it'll also give the PvE community an active reason to get them as well. Unfortunately to me, the text here is a little unclear whether we'll will now only have a single necklace to represent the shards, or if there will be multiple variants for each of the in-game V-Bloods like we do currently. The concept ability shown here looks pretty interesting as well. I may be wrong, but my take on this is that it looks like something that would home in on the closest enemy or mob to the player. While it does suck that it's gonna override our standard ultimate ability, I think the burst potential something like that has could be huge. Let's move on and talk about the armor changes. SLS announced that we'll now have even more options throughout not only the in-game, but the early and mid-game as well. They said, as part of the equipment overhaul, every other tier of armor has been expanded. In fact, we've added four armor sets with unique stats and appearances for every second tier of armor after Bone, represented by the core fantasy archetypes of the primary combat focus archetypes, Brute, warrior, rogue, and scholar. Over the course of your journey, advancing in your crafting will now offer you avenues of specialization. Warrior armor will offer more bonuses to physical damage, scholar armor will offer more spell damage, and so on. With 10 plus new armor sets, you'll be more effective in your combat specialty and look even better while doing it. Now guys, despite all the other awesome things revealed to us, I think this is one of the biggest pieces of the blog. In my opinion, this is something that is probably going to completely change the game. In the current state, aside from buffs, we only really have legendary weapons to further 
further increase our physical and spell damage. While there's certainly some spell balancing that'll need to be done as well, I think having the flexibility to augment through armor will really add to the build variety and change the sustain meta we've seen to date. I'm especially excited to see what these armors change in terms of what blood players choose to run. This just might knock warrior blood out of the number one spot it's held since Gloomrat released last year. We now also know that the teaser we got on X last week was armor that'll be a part of the rogue archetype. With that as an example, I'm really excited to see how the rest of these will look. Speaking of aesthetics though, their next topic touches on that very thing and how they'll address the lack of stylistic variety players currently have. Here's the important bit. The equipment menu has been changed dramatically and now has a collapsible section attached to each armor piece. In this new section, there is a slot where you can place any armor piece which will overwrite the appearance of anything you're wearing currently. In the same menu, you'll find a host of color palettes, which it looks like currently there's 31 in total. So not only are we getting the armor recoloring that was previously teased, we're also getting a transmog system, which I mean, guys, that is really great to see. I did not expect that. Uh, they then go to show a few examples of this with some of the new armors as well. And every single one of those looks good to me. If I had to pick a personal favorite, it'd be the devilish warlock. I mean, come on, <laughs> who wouldn't rock a collar like that? The most controversial screenshot of the post has to be this one though. They showcase a full view of the character inventory here, which shows us several things. Looking past the color palette, we see new tabs designated as attributes and blood pool. At this point, it's anyone's guess as to what these are, but here's my personal speculation. I think the attributes tab is hitting at a modifier pool similar to the current jewel system, but it's one targeted towards either the new artifacts or the new armors instead. My current guess for the blood pool tab is that it's likely related to either the new events or just has something to do with a new take on the current blood pot system. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. We also see a new bag to the far right of the equipment bar, lot slots in the inventory below, and some new sorting options below that. My take on the bag is that it's a combined or upgraded version of the four separate bags we have now, while the lock slots may potentially have something to do with the new event or an item they're implementing. As for the sorting options, the the only one that has me stumped is this one, since it looks like the other two are an auto sort and inventory stack button respectively. To take a shot in the dark, maybe it's a new sorting option for blood pots or has something to do with the new blood pool tab. The thing that set Discord aflame Thursday and well into Friday was the new hop bar layout. Right away after seeing this, you might assume they're changing it to four weapons and four utility slots. Several players were in a heated discussion on this very thing and about losing the ninth slot altogether. Jeremy Bearson who's the community manager for SLS, hopped on and had the following to say. Right away, Jeremy addressed the biggest concern and let players know we'll have freedom with the full eight slots instead of the weird four and four split one might think. After his appearance, as you'd assume, the questions and comments came in waves. In response to a particularly passionate player, Jeremy said this, you aren't entirely aware of everything in the patch yet, and there's a lot to take into consideration beyond the current meta and the way things work. There's also lots of adjustments we can make. I generally just warn against speculating too confidently when there's going to be a pretty major shakeup in the meta. Things will be different than they are now in a lot of ways, but we're looking to our testers and the general community to adjust as we need to. He went on to point out adjustments would be a lot easier after 1.0, presumably pointing to the much anticipated new engine they've been working on. As a follow up, one player asked the question most of us have been curious about, which is will there be another open or closed beta? While Jeremy unfortunately didn't specify, he did state and confirm that there would be one. From there, things became more centered around the concern of slot removal once again. Several players began questioning why the removal was necessary and poured it toward Royin as an example of why 9 works. For those of you unaware, Royin is a seasoned PvPer and content creator in the EU. He's actually been playing the game with the custom bound PS5 controller since pre Goonrot and has done so at a high level. In response, Jeremy said this, Royin's controller setup is not what we would consider ideal and V Rising has a lot of buttons. We've revisited the whole UI and the way controls work on console to make it fit in a way that feels good. That ended up with eight buttons and it works and it works well. Not too long after this, the question of crossplay possibility surfaced and the answer there was a simple no. To finish the subject, players asked why PC couldn't differ from console with that being the case. Jerry responded by stating SLS just wanted there to be parity. 
Things slowly began simmering down after that, with the last few nuggets to gleam being that the quadruple axis shown is actually one of the less mechanically interesting changes among the artifacts, and of course that sitting is 100% real. Guys, to be honest, after reading through everything, I would be lying if I said I didn't feel an initial sense of loss and disappointment at the reduction as well. However, after giving it some more thought, I've come to the conclusion that this is ultimately a good thing. No matter what side of the argument you're on, I think everyone can agree that one of the issues retaining players for the game is the skill ceiling and disparity between a new and seasoned player. I feel the change SLS made in Gloomrot did a pretty good job of making PvP more forgiving, and the reduction in slots, while honestly not a huge change, should still be a step towards bridging the gap in skill ceiling even more. Moving on to the rest of the blog, SLS's next section was dedicated to some of the artistic lighting changes we'll see in 1.0. They had the following to say. Before, we relied on the atmospheric scattering of the sky for ambient lighting. This meant that you would encounter a bit of awkwardness here and there, like the inside of your castle being affected by the morning sun and nighttime gloom. We now rely on pre-made ambient lighting data that we blend in and out depending on the time of day and the player's position. This gives the environments more subtle lighting and helps ground objects in the scene. It's also more lightweight than the previous system, saving on those precious frames per second. Now guys, I'm not going to pretend I understood the particulars and all that, but the change is definitely noticeable and I think the new lighting looks pretty cool. The fact that we're getting frames back on top of that is just a plus. They went on to say the changes also have a big effect on the way materials are displayed, which is most noticeable in the textures of metallic objects. While it doesn't allow for perfect reflections, we can simulate much more realistic looking metal. Combined with all the new armor sets, this unlocks a whole other layer of appreciation for your fresh vampire wardrobe. Guys, looking at this blacked out Blood Moon set, I I think we can all agree it looks pretty sick. I know we've been stuck with it for a while now, but we might not be putting that one down anytime soon. Lastly, the blog was concluded with a nod towards its 2024 release date. SLS stated 1.0 is currently planned to drop sometime in the second half of Q2. For those unaware, Q2 stands for quarter two and is between the 1st of April and 30th of June. So if nothing else changes, it'll drop sometime between May 15th and June 30th as a rough estimate. And that's it for today's video, guys. This was my first time covering a dev blog, so hopefully I didn't go too long with it. But if you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe. And as always, thank you so much for watching. This is GrimXV, signing off.